Welcome to the Heme Consults orientation video number 13. Today I'm talking about bone marrow biopsies, how to think about them. So I told you that when I was a fellow, I did a lot of bone marrow biopsies and then I came to be an attending and I barely did any bone marrow biopsies. And I kept thinking like, what was the point of all of that? But I want to talk to you about what to do with bone marrow biopsies, when you should absolutely do them and when you should not. Okay, so seven things to consider. You get a request for a bone marrow biopsy. The first thing is that every team, for the most part, wants a bone marrow biopsy. It helps people feel like they're doing something. They're like, yeah, he has done a bone marrow biopsy and in two days we'll know the answer because it gives people two days to wait on the answer. But for the most part, the bone marrow biopsy, it really tells us something we don't already know or something that we don't already strongly suspect. And so it's important to recognize that while a bone marrow biopsy helps everybody feel better because something is happening, it's not always the right answer for the patient. And you want to make sure that for this patient, a bone marrow biopsy is the answer. Okay. The second thing I want you to consider is to understand the limitations of the bone marrow biopsy. So sometimes people think it's a magic test and that you'll do the bone marrow biopsy and you'll figure out all that's going on in the marrow. And that's not always the case. Number one, consider that disease can be patchy. And just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So that's the challenge that sometimes we can have false negative results. And so you want to be careful in just knowing that a negative bone marrow biopsy is not always reassuring, depending on what you think the underlying disease process is. Another thing is that a bone marrow biopsy may be non-diagnostic. And so you do all the work and then it's a poor sample and we have to do it again. <laughs> and that's why it's important to say, do we need to do this? Because if you need to, then you don't say, oh, we didn't get it the first time. Let's forget about it. You're like, oh, no, 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 we need it. So we're going to do it. But a lot of times we're doing it because maybe it might be helpful. You want to think about it. Because the other thing you want to think about is that it's a painful procedure. It's a painful procedure. Even when you get really good at numbing people up, it can be pretty uncomfortable. So you want to make sure that you do the bone marrow biopsy not to help people feel better, but because it's really indicated. Okay, so when is it indicated? It's a great question. Definitely get a bone marrow biopsy when the patient comes in with new onset pancytopenia that's not explained, or maybe even progressive pancytopenia that's not, ex not fully explained by the current clinical picture. Or you look under the microscope and you're like, oh, is that a blast? <laughs> oh, is that three blasts? Those are some reasons why you do a bone marrow biopsy right away. Okay, don't do a bone marrow biopsy when the team just wants something done. It's like the patient's been in the hospital for three weeks. We now want a bone marrow biopsy. Don't just do it because they ask you. Remember, you're the one in charge. You get to figure out whether it makes sense from the standpoint of the patient. So don't get a bone marrow biopsy to diagnose anything that you would otherwise diagnose by labs. For example, I once diagnosed a case of parvovirus by bone marrow biopsy. You know, I could have diagnosed it with lab results that were less invasive. And sometimes in the rush to do the bone marrow biopsy, we miss opportunities to try to figure out other things that might help us find the answer without the bone marrow biopsy. Okay. Now, one thing you have to think about is that when teams are insistent on getting a bone marrow biopsy, they're pretty insistent. So they'll call you Monday and they'll say, we think a bone marrow biopsy is needed today. And then they'll call you Wednesday and say, well, we think it's today. And then they'll call you Friday and they'll say, well, it's still today. Sometimes you do the bone marrow biopsy because you're like, you know what team, you're not going to stop calling me. Let's do this. So it's not a great reason to do a bone marrow biopsy. But if it really is in question, instead of dragging it out, just do the bone marrow biopsy. Okay, that brings me to the next point. If you say, oh, let's do peripheral blood flow cytometry, and then we can skip marrow. Mm -mm. <laughs> peripheral blood flow cytometry is not a substitute for marrow. So peripheral blood flow cytometry makes sense in a patient in whom you're seriously concerned that they have CLL. So usually that's a lymphocytosis. That's pretty profound. Anything else? The bone marrow biopsy is not the same as a flow cytometry. And really, the sample is better when you get it from bone marrow. So if you're thinking, oh, flow cytometry may be helpful, you're really thinking, oh, this patient needs a bone marrow. So think about that carefully. Okay, so I'm going to say something a little controversial here, and that's that I think doing bone marrow biopsies may not be the best use of your time. So I did over 150 during fellowship. Okay. And now as an attending, I don't do bone marrow biopsies. In fact, there are clinics where people get bone marrow biopsies done all day. 
And people have these special instruments now to do bone marrow biopsies, including super awesome drills. Why are you still doing bone marrow biopsies? Okay, do as many as you need to to get proficient and then hand them over as much as you can. For us, that might mean asking the question, oh, is this a procedure that IR could help us do? If you think about it, it's easy for them. This is something they do pretty much all day. Okay, they don't do bone marrow biopsies all day, but it's pretty easy for them because they're doing an image guided, whereas you're going blind. And then they're down there doing procedures all day. That's just their job, procedure after procedure. You have other things that you're running around and doing, and that doesn't make your job less important than theirs or vice versa. It's just that it's what they do. They do it so much easier. Think about how many you can defer to somebody else who can do it as well. Because if you think about the fact that your mind is your greatest asset, if somebody else can do it, you should let them. Okay, so this week, as you are thinking about bone marrow biopsy requests, ask yourself, what can this bone marrow biopsy give me that I do not already have? And that will help you in your bone marrow biopsy making decisions. So I wish you well as you think about how minimizing your role in doing bone marrow biopsies all the time may be helpful or whether you don't think it may be helpful. It'd be interesting to have that conversation. I'll see you in the next video.